good morning and welcome to the Tarrant County Master Garden, Gardener's Community Garden. Um, this is, we're going to start here at our butterfly garden. My name is Janice Penwarden and I'm the lead over the butterfly garden. I've been a master gardener since 2016. I was in the class of 2016. This actually was our intern project. Um, everyone that goes through a Master Gardener class will have a project to complete. This was a, a, a group effort. There were four of us in the group and the butterfly garden actually was already here but it had gone kind of lax. There wasn't much being done with it. So we took it over as our project and came in and I don't know if you see these little the rocks along here. This is actually, if you didn't have all the growth here, it actually is a shape of a butterfly. So the rocks make the outline and then we filled in with all the plants. Now, um, <clears throat> the, one of the things you'll see as part of our project, the sign says Monarch Way Station. This is a, a designation that this has been declared a monarch way station uh, what we have to have to be able to get this we have to provide the uh, foliage the the nectar plants there has to be shelter for butterflies um, and there has to be water provided for the butterfly if you can meet all that with your garden then you can also get a way station designation this is used to track the butterflies when they're tagged. The monarch butterflies get tagged. Um, if you find one, if you're lucky enough to ever find a monarch butterfly that is tagged, the tag is under the wing, it's on the back of the wing, that has a very small number on it, um, you can call a number and tell them what tag that is, what tag number. They can track it and tell where that butterfly originally came from. So that's an important part of keeping up with the monarch migration. Um, <clears throat> the other requirement, shelter. We've got a nice little butterfly house here that um, we did as part of our project. I can't say that I've ever really seen butterflies living in there. It just looks really nice. Butterflies mainly seek shelter under the plants. Um, the, the leaves provide their protection when they get under the leaves. Now, <clears throat> another thing for water, we have what's called a puddler. This on the ground is a puddler that uh, we put into the garden. Dottie Woodson had a class. They made this uh, cement bowl, and the purpose is to keep it low to the ground um, it will attract any pollinator, uh, bees, wasps, unfortunately, <laughs> yellow jackets, unfortunately, but they're pollinators and we need them. But the, the gravel in there helps to kind of filter the water. Uh, they need the nutrients that come from this water. The uh, rocks are in here for them to stand on so they don't have to get in the water. And it, if you'll notice, it's got this black irrigation hose in here. It's, it's connected to, and we'll, we'll see it when we go around the other side. This is connected to a rain barrel. So the water that's coming in here is rainwater. And uh, that's a very good source of water for the butterflies and the pollinators, the bees and whatnot. So we were able to control it from the, the rain barrel. And right, I did turn it on a little bit ago, so you can see it's beginning to kind of fill. Um, so we'll turn it off before we leave. The Tarrant County Master Gardener Association has partnered with the Tarrant Regional Water District to encourage water conservation. TRWD maintains four area lakes and pipelines needed to provide surface water to local water treatment plants so they can clean that water to meet drinking standards for our communities. They also work with many cities in Tarrant County, such as Fort Worth, Arlington, Mansfield, and many others to provide water conservation programs to the community.
Conservation is an important water supply strategy to help meet the needs of our growing population. There are currently 2.3 million people living in Tarrant County and is expected to double over the next 50 years. At SaveTarrantWater.com, you can sign up for free weekly watering advice custom to your location. If you're a resident of Tarrant County, you can sign up for a free sprinklers checkup where a licensed irrigator comes to your home, provides a comprehensive evaluation of your system with recommendations to reduce water waste. There's also an event calendar where you can find information about future classes and workshops. So be sure and check out SaveTarrantWater.com to sign up for their free services. We're starting off with the plants. We've got what's called uh, Greg's Blue Mist. This is one of the favorites uh, nectar plants of a monarch butterfly. We've got that here and there throughout the garden. And um, when the monarchs are going through, these blue mists, these Greg mists will be one of their favorites. Um, then we have the cone flower. They land on the cone flower to get the, the nectar. Um, that's another good uh, plant for pollinators, for butterflies. Uh, the, we've also got the flame, <coughs> excuse me, the red flame acanthus. You can see over there, we'll see it bloom, oh, uh, right here, sorry. Uh, the red, this, this red flower will attract the butterflies. Butterflies love red. So the red flower will attract uh, the butterflies. Um, this is, is fennel. This is the purple fennel, a bronze fennel, I'm sorry, bronze fennel. And I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you can see these caterpillars that are on here, those are swallowtail butterfly caterpillars they love this plant and um, there's another one there's another one they're just everywhere um, the swallowtail will lay their egg on this plant this is a host plant what we call a host plant you do need to have a host plant in your butterfly garden and you need to know what different butterflies require what different plants. The swallowtails, the eastern swallowtail, the uh, giant swallowtail, they love this uh, fennel. So they will lay their eggs on this because it's their host plant. When the eggs hatch, you get little tiny, uh, little tiny caterpillars and you can see how big they will actually get as they continue to eat. They will eat, this used to be full in here. They've obviously eaten a lot of it. And uh, they will continue to eat until they're so big that they can't eat anymore. And that's when they will begin to pupate, which means they'll start to make the, the chrysalis that they will be in until they turn back into a butterfly. They might stay on this plant to make their chrysalis, typically, they will try to find a sturdy structure, something that isn't going to be, you know, moving around a lot, um, because they'll spin a little silk uh, thread to attach to that surface, and then they will continue covering themselves with their chrysalis. So, one year I actually found a chrysalis hanging on the arbor over the pond. They didn't have to travel far, so they found a spot. But um, it can be seen that they do find a chrysalis every now and then on the plant. So you can actually see the entire life cycle on one plant if you're lucky enough. The egg, the, uh, the pupa, the larva, the chrysalis, and then when it hatches, the butterfly. So that's a possibility. Um, this plant right here is another plant that attracts the butterflies. It's a liar leaf sage. <clears throat> and it's a, it's a little invasive, so you have to watch. But the bloom it creates will attract the butterflies. Um, this plant, I'll tell you, is <laughs> it's, an, it's an interesting plant. It's called uh, Snow on the Prairie. And I can't promise that it's going to be real attractive to butterflies. It looks so similar 
to this plant in the pot there. This is a milkweed. It looks very similar to that milkweed. So it originally started over by a building over there and it ended up in here and we thought we were getting milkweed. So we let it grow. It's a beautiful plant. It adds a lot of texture, it adds a lot of, of color once the white, that's why it's called snow on the prairie. It'll turn white on the top. And it's really pretty. So this is the first year it's been in the garden, so I'm not sure really what it's going to do as far as butterflies go. But we're going to leave it in here just to add a little more volume to the, to the bed. Um, when you do a butterfly garden, it's up to you to put what you want in there. But you want to be sure, whatever area you're living in, you know what butterflies will come into that area. Then you want to know what, uh, what nectar, what plants you need, what host plants you're going to need for them to eat. And kind of design your garden bed with that in mind. Um, this is again the flame acanthus. It's a perennial. Everything in here is pretty much a perennial that will come back year after year. We have to take a lot of it out because it gets so overgrown. But um, this is a beautiful plant once it's really all, all colored out with the red. I also have a pincushion, scabiosa, which is a, the botanical name. But this is a pincushion and it's another nectar plant that the butterflies really do like. Um, and it's just kind of been overgrown by these others, but you can still see it, so the butterflies can find it. This is an interesting plant. This is called a, a Dutchman's pipe vine, this, this vine here. And you see all the little uh, seed pods under here. That's how it just keeps making. And it's a good thing because this is the favorite and it is the host plant of the pipe vine swallowtail butterfly. So the pipe vine swallowtail will lay eggs on this plant. Again, those because it's a host plant. Those eggs hatch. The caterpillars will begin eating and this plant will be totally destroyed. It will be gone but there's enough of it that will be left and it grows quickly. So it will regenerate, come back for the next cycle of, of caterpillars. But it's a, it's a real interesting plant. It has an unusual smell. <laughs> I'll just say that. This is just how you want your garden to look. You don't have to have containers in your garden, but we chose to do this just to make a little bit of distinction where the milkweed is milkweed is what has to be in place for a monarch butterfly if you do not supply milkweed you will not have monarch butterflies they may come through for the nectar but they will not stay because there's nothing for them to lay their eggs on this is their host plant and <clears throat> the monarch butterfly is one of the most important butterflies that we have and it's because of its migration the monarch starts out in Mexico um, and flies all the way to Canada, over 3,000 miles. It has about five generations along that route. Um, and all along the way, it has to find nectar and host plants to continue the generations. Um, once it's in Canada and it spends its time whatever it does in Canada, it begins its flight back. That fifth generation is going to begin the flight back to Mexico. Now that fifth generation is a little bit different. That fifth generation will fly the entire route. It will not stop and reproduce. So it's very important on their way back that they have a supply of nectar because they're not going to lay eggs. They're not, they're not the ones that uh, reproduce. They need all their energy, instead of for reproduction, they need all their energy to get back to Mexico. So we have to be the responsible ones that make sure they have what they need to get there and that's going to be the nectar. So 
please remember to provide a lot of nectar plants in your garden. Now this will take place, they start heading back in the fall, and so whatever plants that you know your area will flower in the fall, that's what you want to look at. Look it up, Google it, whatever, wherever your area is, and see what you can plant, because that's going to be really important. Um, I haven't seen a lot of monarchs this year, and that bothers me. Monarch, uh, their population is really, really dwindling, uh, just like our honeybee population. And the reason that concerns me is if we have no pollinators, if we have no butterflies, honeybees, especially monarchs because they travel so far and they are pollinating that route the entire way. If, they, if we did not have those pollinators, we would eventually not have food because that's where our food comes from. It has to be pollinated. So if we lose our source of pollination, we're going to have to do something a little more drastic to ensure we continue to have corn and wheat and you know the things that citrus fruits anything that requires pollination we've got to have these critters to do that for us so important provide what they need have a butterfly pollinator garden this is another type of milkweed um, I believe this is the green milkweed there's over a hundred varieties of milkweed now there are only four or five that are native to our area it's very important to plant the native milkweed, whatever is native in your area. We do see in the nurseries and the plant stores a lot of tropical milkweed being, being sold to the public. Um, it's a beautiful plant. It makes a beautiful bloom, which is the nectar for the, the butterflies. They love it. However, it's a late bloomer. So if you do buy the tropical milkweed, we just ask that you try to remember in the fall when these monarchs are coming back to Mexico, you cut that bloom off. We do not want them to stop to lay eggs or to do any of that because that messes up their migration. The tropical is not native for our area. So that's one of, one of the reasons that it has begun to interfere a little bit with the migration process. So just keep that in mind. They're beautiful plants. The caterpillars love them. They'll eat them down. But in the fall, when they're going back, they don't need to have that plant to, to entice them. So anyway, but this one, like I said, I think this is a green. This is a common. This is just another type of plant that was providing some nectar. Um, uh, we've got lantana. Lantana is a great native around here. It makes a nice bloom and they do like the nectar of this lantana. Um, again, we've got some flame acanthus here. It's gotten so huge, it's falling over, but um, we tried to pull it back a little bit. We've got some snake, it's, it's called snake herb under here. And I was hoping I could see a little area that's blooming because it makes a purple bloom, which is their, their nectar source. And it's a great, it's a great one to have in the garden. Swallowtails again, they will flock to this. I'm seeing one, two, three, uh, probably, there's probably a half dozen caterpillars on here that are uh, eating away. They're, they're loving this. So they will uh, eventually make their chrysalis and like I said, I found a chrysalis hanging on this arbor last year. And it was a monarch chrysalis, but so that really made me happy. But um, anyway, more grapes missed around here. And then, like I said, just the things that you know in your area are going to provide the nectar. You know, you can put in you know, anything that blooms. Daisies. Uh, and of course, now that I try to think of any name of a plant, I can't. But anything that blooms okay this is a blooming bush this is a butterfly bush it's the, the common name for it um, it puts out these these long uh, blooms here on the end that when they're really blooming they're beautiful and they're a purple color on this particular bush 
the butterflies love this as well, and other pollinators. Um, it wasn't really planted in the butterfly garden, and yet it's right next to it, so it's a good thing. The little story about the pond, it wasn't being taken care of. It was not our project. It was another intern's project from a class probably three or four years before our class. And it just was not being taken care of, but they didn't continue the Master Gardener program, so it just kind of sat here. And I thought, well, it's right beside the butterfly garden. I'm going to take care of it. So that's what, that's how I got the, the, the pond.